What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams. Happy Friday. And today we're going to wrap up our week of Johnny Depp films as we continue to celebrate the actor's 60th birthday here on the channel by discussing From Hell, starring, of course, Johnny Depp, alongside Heather Graham, Ian Holm, Robbie Coltrane, Ian Richardson, Jason Fleming, Samantha Spiro, and Susan Lynch. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I send the introduction, it's Friday. Happy Friday. And today we are here to wrap up our week of Johnny Depp films by discussing from hell and our movie opens in the year 1888 as mary kelly and a small group of london prostitutes trudge through unrelenting daily misery their friend Anne crook is a former prostitute who is now married to a wealthy painter named albert and has recently given birth to a daughter named alice when Anne is kidnapped, the women are drawn into a conspiracy with links to high society. Anne's kidnapping is followed by the gruesome murder of another one of the women, and it soon becomes apparent that each of the prostitutes is being hunted, murdered, and mutilated post-mortem by a killer called Jack the Ripper. The prostitute murders grab the attention of Whitechapel police inspector Frederick Aberline, a brilliant yet troubled man whose police work is aided by his psychic visions. Aberline is still grieving the death of his own wife during childbirth two years prior. His colleague, Sergeant Peter Godley, tries to grasp Aberline's strange theories. Now, Aberline's investigations reveal that an educated person, likely knowledgeable in human anatomy, is responsible for the murders because of the highly precise surgical methods that are being used. Anne is soon located in a workhouse after being lobotomized because doctors deemed her violent and insane. It is implied that the operation was performed in order to silence her. Aberline consults Sir William Gull, a physician to the royal family, drawing on his experience and knowledge of medicine. During this meeting, Gull deduces that Aberline is struggling with opium addiction. Gull's findings point Aberline to a darker more organized conspiracy than he had originally suspected. Aberline then becomes deeply involved with the case, which takes on a personal meaning when he falls in love with Mary. Aberline deduces that Freemason influence is involved in the murders. His superior, a high-ranking Freemason, opposes Aberline's methods and suspends him from the case. Thereafter, Aberline persists and discovers that Gull is the killer. Gull was instructed to dispose of all witnesses to the forbidden marriage of painter Albert Sickert to Anne Crook, the mother of his legitimate daughter, Alice. Sickert is then revealed to be none other than Prince Albert, the grandson of reigning Queen Victoria. Albert is dying of syphilis, which makes baby Alice the soon-to-be heiress to the throne. Gull boasts to Aberline that he will be remembered in history for giving birth to the 20th century. Aberline draws his gun, vowing that Gull will never even see the 20th century. But before he is able to shoot, he is knocked out by Ben Kidney, 
another Freemason. The Freemasons then try to eliminate Aberline without leaving any witnesses, but Aberline fights back and kills one of the assassins by overturning a carriage. Next, he rushes to save Mary, but he arrives too late and blames his superior for not helping him or Godly on the case. While going through another gruesome murder, Aberline discovers a brunette lock of hair, which differs from Mary's red, and decides to conceal this evidence in order to protect her. Gull's increasingly sinister behavior lends insight into his murderous but calculating mind. Rather than publicly charge Gull, the Freemasons lobotomize him in order to protect themselves and the royal family from the scandal. Gull defiantly states that he has no equal among men, remaining unrepentant until the operation, which renders him an invalid, just like it had for Anne. Aberline then goes to the Ten Bells Tavern in Whitechapel and receives a mysterious letter from Mary. It is revealed that Gull had mistaken another prostitute named Ada for Mary and killed her instead. Leery of being watched closely by Freemasons, Aberline decides not to look for her, knowing that she's out there. He burns Mary's letter, knowing that he can never have a normal life with her. Aberline then has a vision that reveals that Mary has adopted Alice and that the two are living in a cottage on a cliff by the sea. Sergeant Godley then finds Aberline dead of an opium overdose. Distraught, Godley places two coins over Aberline's eyes and mournfully says, Good night, sweet prince, as our movie comes to its close. So here we are, much like I said about the other two movies. I enjoyed this one. This one I have fond recollection of having seen before. I actually recall having seen this in theaters with my girlfriend when we dated the first time. And I enjoyed it then. I still enjoy it now. However, it is a little bit too long. It's very dry in some areas. And when you're telling a period story like this that's based on historical fact, you can't alter too much and make things too actiony or violent more so than they already are. But I feel like, again, maybe not even 15 minutes this time, maybe just five to 10 minutes, maybe just like a slim trim to some of the filler in this. And you've got a much smoother, coherent, quicker paced film where People won't lose the interest when you're doing a period piece like this. Because that's one of the things that I feel hinders a lot of period dramas is the slow pacing because of the exposition. You know, it's one of the reasons why to this day I still haven't seen Titanic. It is a three hour movie about a ship that sinks. I know the outcome. This movie shouldn't be more than an hour and 45 minutes. I don't need two plus hours of backstory for these characters. Introduce me to them. Get them on the ship. Get the ship at sea. Have the ship hit the iceberg. Have the ship sink. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bang. Like for real. And so that's one of the reasons why I still haven't watched it. Now, I will be watching it in due time. If memory serves me correctly, next year, Leonardo DiCaprio turns 50. So I'll be watching it as part of his month, doing all his movies in retrospective. But that's then. But again, that's one of the things that I feel always hinders 
period piece dramas. It's the same thing that hindered Wyatt Earp. Tombstone was able to get around it. And a little bit of foreshadowing for when we get to Tim Burton month down here in November, it's the same thing that kind of hindered Sleepy Hollow. Doesn't make them bad movies, still great movies. But the pace just needs to be picked up a little bit. We know the story to a certain extent of Jack the Ripper. We still don't know to this day who Jack the Ripper was. There's a number of suspects out there, and in this telling, it's Gull. But there's there's actually theories that say that Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland, was Jack the Ripper. You got to do some digging, some research about that. But there's a theory that says that Lewis Carroll is Jack the Ripper. Whoa, okay. How's that for, for a little bit of mind blown action there? The same man who came up with Alice and the White Rabbit and the Mad Hatter and the March Hare and the Queen of Hearts murdered prostitutes in London. Okay. But I'm getting too far off here. From Hell is a good story. I just, I forewarn people that have never seen this. It is dry. Which makes it feel longer than it really is. But if you can get past that, it's a good movie. I do enjoy it more than I enjoyed Chocolat. I do enjoy it more than I enjoyed Blow. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give From Hell three and a half out of five stars. We had a little bit of a step ladder here this week from two and a half to three to three and a half stars. What do you guys think of From Hell? Those of you that have seen it, let me know if you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. And let's have that conversation, that discussion, that debate, that interaction that I'm always asking you guys for in the comments below. And make sure you guys tune in tomorrow right here to the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And it's new release Saturday. We're going to be talking about Flamin' Hot, a Disney Plus and Hulu original film directed by Eva Longoria, starring Jesse Garcia, Annie Gonzalez, Emilio Rivera, Vanessa Martinez, Dennis Habert, and Tony Shalhoub. But then, right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, the Jeff Meacham Network, and across the Jeff Meacham Network multiverse of media, it'll be time for AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling's Forbidden Door Watch Lawn event. The simple man Noah Foster, the heap man James Hebert once again on the call, bringing you the action as they do for the non-WWE events. And speaking of non-WWE events, if you are a member of the members-only exclusive section of the Casa D18 Studios channel, make sure you go and you check out the simple man Noah Foster and I calling the action for this insanity that was Jay Lethal, Jeff, and the goddess Karen Jarrett versus Mark Briscoe, Papa Briscoe, and that downright no good meddling mother bleeper Aubrey Edwards. A lot of you guys know Noah and I have a friendly rivalry when it comes to these individuals, specifically Aubrey Edwards and the Jarrett's. So when we saw that this match was official, we decided we had to call the action in the chaos and present it to you, the viewers. If you are not already a member of the members only section of the Casa D18 Studios channel, it is only $5 a month and you will get exclusive stuff like this wrestling DVD reviews, retro watch alongs, and so much more in the coming months and years. So go ahead, sign up. Again, only five bucks. 
for a ton of brand new wrestling content. You don't want to miss out on any of that content right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel in the members only section of the Casa D18 Studios channel on the Jeff Meacham Network and across the Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media. So much good stuff coming up. Forbidden Door Watch Along. We've got a whole nother week of Johnny Depp movie reviews coming next week. The War Zone on Sunday. You don't want to miss out. So make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out any time a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel or any time we go live. As is the case with Stat Boy Sports Bar, Open Mic Night, Pay-Per-View PLE Watch Along coverage, etc. Share these videos with your family, friends, loved ones, coworkers, movie fanatics, cinephiles in your life. Fans of Johnny Depp, fans of Heather Graham, fans of Robbie Coltrane, fans of the story of Jack the Ripper or period pieces or Freemason mythology. Anybody you can think of that would enjoy this content in this video, share it with them as it's the only way we're going to keep my visibility up in YouTube's algorithms now that we are, in fact, a monetized channel right here on the platform. Thank you once again to everybody out there who joined me and tuned in today. It means so much more to me than you guys will ever know. And I will see you guys next time. Now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way.